Moustache by Margie Palantini, illustrated by Henry Cole. Moose had a problem, a horrible, hairy, prickly problem. It grew right below his nostrils and just above his upper lip, a moustache. Now, not a few spare hairs or shy little stubble, no mere weak wandering whiskers on the upper lip of this moose. No siree. Moose had a big, bushy, bristly, mighty moustache, but a moustache that was a blurry, slurry, mangy mess, and it itched a lot. Sure, he plucked and he tweezed. He even clipped, snipped, and teased, but his combs were still cowards, and his brushes rebelled. His scissor scissors simply surrendered. Moose was in a frizzy tizzy. The moustache was completely crimping his style. He was a great hoofer, but he could barely bop and hip hop with a moustache going flip flop. He was a wonderful chef, but he simply could not flambe his souffle with all those whiskers in his way. And he was a daring skier, but how could he downhill race with a mighty moustache blowing in his face? Moose had to do something, and soon, but what? After days and days of much serious thought, Moose got an idea. He crossed some hair here, he crossed some hair there, and he tied his moustache around his neck. A moose scarf he seemed to be the ideal answer to his problem. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect. But then his moustache got knotted, knotted and mangled and horribly tangled, and those hundreds of hairs still prickled and tickled. Worse, Moose could barely take a breath with all that moustache wrapped around his neck. So Moose untied, unwrapped, unknotted, and ah, gulped in some fresh air. He got another idea. He parted some hair this way, he parted some hair that way, and he heaped all that moustache on top of his head. Moustachioed antlers seemed to be the ideal answer to his problem. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect, until a squadron of squirrels and one very nosy gopher moved right into the moose motel. They huddled and hoarded, furrowed in, burrowed out. Needless to say, it became quite crowded up there on Moose's head and heavy and messy. And very, very noisy. The squirrely chitting and chatting, squeals and squawks, woke Moose every morning before the crack of dawn, and that gopher was giving the moose one hairy headache. Moose needed his sleep. He needed his rest. He needed his privacy. Moustachioed antlers. Nuts, said Moose. So he unparted and unpiled, untwisted and untwined, and said adios to those hairy horns. But now, what? 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 The miserable moose took hold of a hunk of hair and he wrestled it, then roped it. He tethered, tied, tamed. Ah, aha, a moose tail. Now that was so simple. That was so easy. That was not so perfectly perfect. Talk about a dizzy do. Moose didn't know if he was coming or going backward, forward, this way, that way. He didn't know which end was which. Moose had to bail on the tail. And so he thought and thought and thought some more, but no other idea was worthy winner. Braids were a bother, a moustache sweater too sweltering, net not. Poor Moose, his problem was truly terrible, unbearable, just downright sad. He felt so alone, he didn't know what else to do. Then call it fate, call it destiny, it was probably dumb luck, 
but one day Moose tripped on his mustache and just had no time to duck. Oomph. Pardon me, pardon me, they both said as they bumped. Then they blinked and they stared and their hearts went thump, thump. She was a moose with a bouffant so bodacious, outrageous, well, it was just plain old big. Hair after hair piled higher than high, a skyscraping dew of glorious curls, a tower of swirling twists and twirls. She was simply splendid, stupendous, absolutely superb. Of course, Moose, how do you ask how? Of course, Moose had to ask how she did what she did to get such a do. Miss Moose winked and then whispered, just a little glue. So she helped, so she helped he fearlessly plunge a hoof into a fat pot of white gooey goop and carefully, oh so carefully, they glopped and they plopped, they pasted and they pressed, they coaxed and curled every truly unruly wayward whisker. Around and around they tweaked and twirled those horrible hairs until Moose's once mangy mess was now a wondrous winding wave of marvelous moustache. Moose gazed in the mirror and smiled, a broad moosey smile. He was so happy, so glad, just giddy with glee. He looked dashing and handsome. Moose gushed, is that really me? With not a care for one hair, the moose pair boogied and bopped. They skied downhill, even uphill, and their cooking was hot, hot, hot. So of course, it wasn't long after that moose and his moustache and his beautiful bride fox trotted and tangoed and waltzed down the aisle. Good hair days, bad hair days, they vowed to love and to cherish. And with hearts heaped with love and pots filled with goop, they both sighed, I do, glue, and promise to never part. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect, and it stuck.